In this episode of the True Love Knots podcast, we delve into the captivating story of Estefania Garcia, a remarkable high school teacher and a familiar face from the fifth season of the popular reality series, Love is Blind. Estefania is renowned for her unwavering commitment to education and adventurous spirit that propels her to explore diverse cultures and landscapes worldwide. When choosing a partner, Estefania's inclinations are crystal clear. She steers clear of those who radiate excessive dominance and those who disregard personal cleanliness. Her pursuit of love is rooted in a deep desire for authentic connections, prioritizing substance over superficiality. Join us today as Estefania offers a glimpse into her journey, sharing the emotional highs and lows of participating in Love is Blind, the unique challenges of forming profound bonds without ever seeing one's potential partner, and the personal and romantic growth she's experienced along this unprecedented path. Hi everybody, Maria Romano here, True Love Nuts. I am so jazzed today because I have one of the gals from Love is Blind, and uh, she has graciously accepted to come on the podcast today to share a little bit about her story about Love is Blind, but her journey for finding love. So first of all, I'm going to hit, I'm going to send out virtual hugs. She's known as Este Estefania Garcia, but we're going to call her Steph. Hi, Steph, and welcome. <laughs> Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. So a little bit, I want to just share with what I have a bit on your bio, and this is about you. Like you said, you are a dance teacher. You were a high school teacher, and you also uh, coach tennis as well, correct? And you live in, currently in Houston. And let's see, it says here that um, talking about finding love, okay, states that she's been picky of the men in the past. Is this true? And people that are aggressively dominant, maybe narcissistic, would you say a little bit of that? Okay. And those who can't keep clean. All right. We're going to have to unpack that a little bit, <laughs> but welcome, welcome. And, and just uh, tell a little bit, everybody about you and a tiny bit of your journey and how you uh, became a contestant on Love is Blind without, you know, divulging too much. Um. So somebody reached out to me on Instagram and asked me if I wanted to be part of love is blind. I had already seen the previous seasons. I was a fan of the show. I am not going to lie. I love the show because of the idea of going, going in there and connecting with someone on an emotional level. So I was very, very like excited about being part of something that was completely different and that something that I believed in. Um, so I went on Love is Blind with really high hopes, really wanting to find the love of my life and my future husband. Um, and I I think I did everything I could for that. Like I actually put work into this experiment and did all the things that they asked us to do. And did you find love? I did not. Uh -huh. um, I did make connections so it's very easy to make connections um emotional connections it's it's an environment where you have no distractions and you're only talking connecting to these people and surprisingly <laughs> it was so easy it was so easy to connect with these people and have something in common um the first day you date all the 15 men in there for 10 minutes but then they start um cutting it to smaller amounts of people. And then at the end, I had two people that I really connected with and I was not sure of which way to go because it's only a few days. You're there for two weeks, but dating is only 10 days. So I made connections with two different guys. They were kind of opposites. One of them was like very energetic, very happy, very loud, very outgoing. And the other one was a little more quiet, more calm, um, more emotional in a way, but like very calm and put together. So it was really hard to decide like which one is the guy for me. And all of this, I couldn't see them, right? So it's like just based on what they're telling you and you have no idea if it's true or not right can't see their facial expressions or anything um 
but yeah. <laughs> so and you, It's interesting because just reading about what you were looking for as far as finding love, you know, men that are dominant and aggressive, and you probably uh, were attracted to a man that's outgoing, right? Somebody that has personality. Not that you can't show it on Love is Blind, but you, you can more or less, I think a voice says everything. And you said something that's really important is you don't really know what they're saying. You can hear what they're saying, but when you actually see the facial expressions, don't you find that has a lot to do with it? It does. And of course, like you don't really see that until you're in this position at, in this show, right? So that was one of the things like, um, on Love is Blind, you have, to, or they give you a timeline for when you can get engaged or not, or when is engagement day. Um, and I started feeling the pressure because other people were like, yeah, I'm in love and I found my guy and I'm in love with him. And I've, I already said, I love you and all these things. For me, love is very special. Um, I don't just go around saying I love you to everybody. I have been in love in before <laughs> And I know exactly how it feels or how I feel when that happens to me. So I wanted to feel that again. And I knew I couldn't say I love you until all the things were together, like put together. It's not a voice or this person that I'm talking behind a wall to. I wanted to say I love you to that person as a whole, like when I saw them. So I kept waiting, but of course I had to decide and between these two men and decide which one was the best for me. Um, even though there was all this pressure, of course. Um, so I decided to go for one of them, the one who was like a hundred percent about me, a hundred percent sure. And <laughs> so I decided to tell the other one, like, Hey, this is our journey is over. I'm just going to go ahead and choose this other person and, see where that goes I made the right decision on choosing the the guy I chose based on everything who he is and um all these our connection was amazing like we had an amazing connection um he was so sweet he wrote me poems and we had like so many things in common and it was just beautiful it was a beautiful connection um I was very excited he proposed to me. I said, yes. Um, then the reveal is the next day. So I get to see this man for the first time. And I see him like the doors open up slowly. And I'm like, super nervous seeing him for the first time. You know, I went, I hugged him. And I knew that he was not the one for me. Like I just knew. And there was no spark. And, you know, I think that happens too when you, uh, even if you date virtually. So for example, even if you're dating somebody out of state, yet, and when you actually meet them, even though you know what they, even what they look like, but when you meet them in person, it's their vibration, right? It's their energy. Yeah. Kind of know if you're going to connect, but at least, you know, and you didn't, you, you know, you, you, you picked the person you thought was for you. And he, you know what? He was smart. He probably felt the same way. Yes. And I recently talked to him because um, I didn't want to be like, we never had a connection because we did. And it was a real connection, but it was a friendship. Right. So, and I told him the exact same thing. There's no way that I felt that way and you that you didn't feel that way. Because it's, as you said, it's energy. It's a connection. And there's a spark that needs to be created. And I feel like if it doesn't come from the other side, there's no way you're going to create that spark, right? So it's both ways. And he he agreed. Well, you know, it's true. And I think that um, I'm seeing that now by watching Taylor and JP. Like, you know, there was that, can, they thought so. And now that they're together, it's just not working for them. The same type of thing has occurred. And it does. And that's okay. You know, it's interesting because I like the process. Because you know, and more men are more visual than women. Wouldn't you say that today? They're very visual, and yet, if um, you know, if you're out there dating and you're using dating apps, I'm sure you have. 
men don't necessarily show themselves in the best light, but they want somebody that does. I hope me some of these men are listening to this too. So, you know, yeah. I, since you've been through this process, I'm sure you've grown, but let's just take a step back. You said you had to actually um, leave your current position as a teacher. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Well, those poor students, they need to have you back. That's for sure. What did you teach? What do you teach in high school? I was teaching Spanish. Oh, definitely <laughs> important. Okay. Well, what can I tell you? But, um, well, I'm sure you have fans from the show, from schools that say, hey. Oh, especially my students. They're the best. <laughs> I bet they love you. Oh, somebody's going to be out there definitely wanting to have you back. So where were you originally from and how did you wind up in Houston? Uh, I'm from Mexico. I was born in Mexico and raised in Mexico. Uh, me and my family moved to the U.S. 18 years ago, which is crazy. But we we moved 18 years ago because of my father. He found a job in Houston mm -hmm. and we moved as a family. Um, and I've been here since. And you love it, huh? And you now you dance. What yes, I do. Dance? What type of dance do you do? I dance swing which is oh, the okay. most American dance there is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not the tango, huh? No. <laughs> well, that's fat. Okay, that's fun. I've taken swing dancing, so that's a lot of fun. So after now that you have the shows aired and now the dust has settled, is your perspective changed on what you're looking for in a mate? I think it has. Um I really thought that I didn't need like that, I guess, physical attraction, because, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be like that person who's like, oh, on the dating apps, I only care about how they look. I never wanted to be that person. But sadly, it is it's very important too. it's very important to have that chemistry, not just physical attraction, but the chemistry. Right. Like and I now I don't want to fool myself anymore. And I know that when you meet someone you can kind of know in the first meeting if there's that chemistry at least there might not be that uh, emotional connection or anything else but I feel like the chemistry can be there right away kind of um so now I feel like it's easier for me to detect that instead of giving people too many chances and like not working out well, then, that, do you, so when you say that before you start to date, you really need to spend some time finding clarity with yourself and actually um, making sure that you don't have any old baggage, right, with residuals from past relationships. And I'm sure you heard that, too. You heard the people share that as well on on the show. And people do this in person. It don't, you don't have to be on the show, am I right, to do that? Yeah. How do you know? sometimes when you share a little too much in the wrong time, don't you feel that it's to your disadvantage that it takes time to trust somebody? Definitely. Um, I am always very cautious. <laughs> I try to be. <laughs> sometimes I say too much and then I'm like, oh no. Like I know when I messed up and I've said too much. I think in the show, thank God, I was very, very cautious and I... As I said, like, well, another thing is I don't drink. I do not drink at all. And all of the people who are there were drinking because they give you lots of alcohol and that's provided and that's great for them, right? They wanted to drink. They don't make anybody drink. Um, they do put the alcohol there and everybody takes it, but I don't. So all the decisions that I was making, my head was actually where it was supposed to be. Um, <laughs> so I feel like, that's why my decisions and everything else was different from the other people too, because I was just not doing things because of the alcohol. Like everything I was doing was because I was actually thinking about it a lot. And you know, um, that's, yeah, that's true. And I, I wanted to ask you because I noticed with the type of cups they used, they weren't clear. Was there a reason for that? Yeah. So they don't know what you're putting in it. <laughs> Like we care. Okay. But you're right. I think the alcohol does loosen your lips and loosen your emotions. We saw that. I mean, we saw that when Aaliyah was sharing what, what went on her personal relationship before, you know, uh, with Uji. 
Uche, I always pronounce okay. it Uche. And, you know, that was like a big blow. And, and others too had things that they shared, but you're right. And, and maybe had, not saying you shouldn't share that, but there's the right time and the right place. And maybe had you not had that alcohol. So uh, kudos to you. I didn't realize that you didn't drink to be very honest. So nobody I, knew actually, <laughs> even I, there. <laughs> says, you know what? I agree. I, you know what? As I've aged, I drink less and less. And you're right. Because if I want to remain clear headed, and focused and make good decisions you want to and you want to wake up feeling good but I noticed one thing that you were very nurturing to the other girls that they, they love oh. they were love and um you and Lydia also I'm sure became close at so did you found you had some good relationships since you know post now I did um I became friends with all the girls and of course I be became closer to some of them um, Lydia is definitely one of the ones I'm closest to because both we have things in common, right? Like we are both Latinas. We both like were very, e we could connect easily because of our backgrounds. Um, of course we're very different because that's why they put us there. Every single person in there was very different, um, for a reason, right? There has to be one of each, <laughs> everyone. Um, so of course, Lydia is definitely one of the ones that I've connected the most with, uh, from the girls that are shown in the primary cast. Um, but also Renee, if you saw her there, I've traveled to like nine countries with her too. Um, you, she you was... love traveling. Yes, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, she's another person that I've connected a lot with. So the show definitely gave me other connections and um, friendships from that experience. So it was great. Well, you know, and that's, that's, what's important. You came out of it. Really. You had no expectation level. You wanted to find love. Then listen, you just don't know. And there's nothing wrong with that. So you go in anybody's wedding or you don't know yet. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> anybody on the horizon. You're going to their wedding. Um, to their wedding from the show. Yes. I can't spoil it. <laughs> okay, no problem. Well, you at least I hope you go. That's for sure. So, uh, basically, now as you you are moving forward, what advice would you give somebody? And really, let's let's take it and impact this. Uh, somebody younger than you. Let's do it. Let's do a generation younger. What would you tell them? Your high school students that are getting ready to get out there and find love. I would tell them to try to connect on a deeper level with those people, not just the superficial. And that's all, that's something I've always thought was true. Um, so ask questions, ask, like be yourself, number one, be yourself, never be afraid to be who you are. I feel like that happens a lot with, with younger people. They try to make the other person happy and just pretend there's somebody else. Um, and that's something I've never done. Ever. Like, I don't apologize for being who I am at all, because I am very proud 100% of who I am. So I, I believe that like be yourself, number one, and also try to connect and ask all the questions that you have. Sometimes we have those questions and we're so scared to ask them because we don't want to uh, fight or we don't want to bring uh, like problems with the other person or something like that. But I think it's, it's very important for our relationship. In communication, absolutely. I think you're right. And that does make a big difference. And do you, do you think that there, these are things we need to start with our younger generation, uh, you know, Gen Z, they call them the Zoomer generation. That's the coin, that's the phrase. Do you really think we should be starting that now and, and teaching, you know, because we're so consumed and especially now with, with social media, right? You pick up your phone and we think every, you're talking about looks, right? And what people perceive. Yeah. And sadly, it's every time it's more about the looks and it's more about all of these other superficial things. And I know we all fall into it, which is super sad. And that's why I went on the show, because I do believe that you can make a connection with somebody who's not your type or who's not who, that you think that that person is like super attractive or whatever. But if you have a good connection with them and there's chemistry, it will work. Right. Uh, I still believe that 100 percent. I still believe if I went on the show again, I could still find someone, right? Um, sadly, it just, my person wasn't there. For that show, maybe they'll invite you back for another show. 
<laughs> True. <laughs> you don't know that. That's, you know, that could happen. But, you know, you said something in here that I got when I got the information about you like you don't like people who are aggressive, assertive, dominance, and those who can't keep clean. Would you please unpack the can't keep clean for me? <laughs> uh, I don't know exactly when I said that. It sounds like I did because that's something I would say. Um, I do like people who are clean and not like, you know, have every, all of us, I feel like we've been to immense plays and it's like just a, a mess, you know, um, it has happened before to me, but also one thing I was telling my friends the other day is that I know I'm in love with someone when I clean up for you, like, <laughs> So that is definitely like something I would prefer, but if they're not clean and I'm in love with them, like you will know because I won't care. Um, I will clean up after them. I'll pick up your socks. I will clean up your room. And like my past boyfriends can probably tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, do you, you're talking about having a connection because you use that word quite a bit. And I do think, excuse me, chemistry, not connection. You, you use that word chemistry is important. And that's that physical that, and it's not always physical where you want to take them and, you know, run in the bedroom with them, but that's, you want to hold them. You want to, you want to kiss them. You want to hug them. You want to touch their hand. And, but now, you know, what, see what they're doing. I think love is blind. It's the reverse. So they want you to build a connection, excuse me, a, um, yes, a connection, right? Where you're building an emotional connection and then you get into the physical connection. But it's interesting, okay? Because out of the actual, if you were to look at how many people are actually married, the same thing, if, even though you look at these other dating shows, you still have to have, I think you need that balance, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think I think it boils down to also you, when you have that great chemistry that physical connection somebody that takes care of themselves so they might not be the most handsome man but somebody that physically you know watches what they eat they don't overindulge you're not saying they can't drink but they're not you know they don't overdo it right they don't overeat although that's kind of hard hard i'm italian you come from the hispanic culture let me tell you that's hard not to eat <laughs> I know, I know. I try not to be very judgy either. <laughs> I understand that. So, are you currently dating anyone now? No, I'm still single. Uh -huh. still so, single. are you out there looking? I mean, are you just you out there actively looking? What I I have taken breaks. Mm -hmm. I feel like we all needed breaks after dating so much in the show. Uh, Right now, like last week, I finally decided to go back into the dating apps and start matching and talking to people. I haven't been on any dates for a while, to be honest, but um, I am ready. I, I think I'm ready for love. And as I said it to them a year ago, <laughs> um, I'm ready to find my person. And not, it doesn't mean that I want to marry them already or like I want to just be married, but I am... I'm ready for love. I am ready for the love again. So what advice would you give any future contestants going on to the show now that you have been through the process and the experience? My advice would be, I know there's lots of alcohol, but don't drink a lot. <laughs> um, try to make good decisions. Like it's a, it's an important decision. And I took it as it was like, it was very serious. And for me, I took it seriously. Um, so I would say, take it seriously, try to make those connections, connections are there, right? Like, it doesn't mean that they're going to be the love of your life. But I made connections with people, I met some great men in there. Um, it didn't work. Sadly, there's, uh, there was nobody for me in there. Um, I still feel like it. it's a good, it's a good way to meet someone. It, it was crazy when we actually got to see everybody for the first time in person. And it's like, I've been talking to this person and I had no idea what they look like. Um, <laughs> some, it was kind of funny cause we all met together at a bar when we came back. Um, so one of the guys who was there one time, he told me his height and I was kind of mad at him cause we're not supposed to know, what they look like or how tall they are or whatever. 
and he told me his height. He told me he was five eight or something like that. And to be honest, somebody tells me they're five eight. I'm already putting a picture, and I'm not liking it. Right. So that's not really good. five five, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Probably you know that. right. So like, what yeah. five eight? I'm five four. Like I don't want somebody who's five eight. Um, so I didn't say that, but I, what I told him, of course, me trying to be all funny, I was like, well, sadly I'm taller than you. And he believed me. <laughs> oh, when he met you, <laughs> when he met me, he was like, I thought you were six feet tall. And I was like, oops, I never told you I was not. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was, that's, fun. oh gosh, that is hilarious. But you know what? Height has a lot to do with it for women. It does. I, I will say that I, myself, I'm not a fan. I'm a widow, but I, when I, I'm in the dating world, I'm not a fan of dating somebody much shorter than me. As a, when I don't know what that is. <laughs> so sorry, every guy's out there. <laughs> I don't know how you feel. Now, you know, one thing is this, but, but so just really, you're saying the alcohol is the biggest thing. Do you think um, that, Somebody was talking about that there was some article written about Izzy about his credit score. Do you think that should have been portrayed that way? I thought it was a little like, you know, it just, I don't think that should have been brought up. I mean, was that an issue or something? Did you find? We, they give us um, questions to talk about, mm -hmm. like every single question that you could probably have before you marry someone, right? Which is amazing. I still like look at the questions and use them on my on my dates. Um, but they gave us a questionnaire about finances and all these like money questions about the future and all these things. I think it was kind of important to be honest. I credit scores for me don't matter. <laughs> as long as they <laughs> clean themselves up. I mean, people could have yeah. yeah. I guess like, they, yeah. It is important. Of course, I want a man who's good with his money and stuff like that. Um, you also have to be able to be flexible and like, you know, it's not like, okay, bad credit score. No, nobody's ever going to be perfect, right? We all, we know that your guy is probably going to have something. My guy could be dirty. Uh, my guy could be this, could be a, maybe he doesn't have the best credit credit score. For me, it wouldn't be a deal breaker if it was the right person, right? Like if it, everything else was right. Or they're willing to make the change too. And I think that, you know, you know, you're, first of all, you're talking you're in your late 20s, early 30s, completely different. I got to tell you, when I deal with people, I'm in my 60s, mm -hmm. completely different. So, you know, you've gone through a little bit more of life experience. So that's the key thing. So what's on the horizon for you before we close? Because I really want to be mindful of your time. What's going to happen now? Where do you want to go with, since now you've post Love is Blind? Well, of course, I want to find my soulmate. Yes. <laughs> I hope that's out there for me somewhere. Um, I would love to keep dancing and teaching dance. I love also, of course, being a high school teacher was one of my passions. But if it has to wait for a little bit, I would like to probably put it off for a while now that I actually took a break. Um, I would love to keep dancing all over the world, traveling, Um and hopefully I find my, my person, my soulmate. So let's put it out there. You need to get on dancing with the stars. I'm sending it out. <laughs> yes, that's okay. what I need. We got to get, put that out, that message there. That's the start, right? So that's, <laughs> that's where you should start with that. And that way then you definitely can dance to your heart's content. Any closing, anything closing that you'd like to say before we sign off to everybody that's listening, that will be listening to this. Um, what I would like to say, if you're trying to find love out there, be yourself, number one. Um, and always ask the right, the right questions for you. They're all different for each one of us. Well, thank you so much, Steph. I really, really appreciated you coming on. And, you know, everybody out there, I hope you've gleaned some information. You know, we, we you, our community, most of you that listen to me are not just in your 50s and 60s. You're a little younger. And what I think it's interesting is the correlation of what you shared and that you have your act together. You know exactly what you want and you staying authentic. And that's the key thing and not rushing. 
So it's good to hear that you're not rushing because of your biological age. And then when people get to my age, it's with the mortality clock is kicking in. And I tell people, you know, find that, take the time to find your right soulmate. And that's what it's all about. So everybody out there, true love knots community, continue to stay healthy, happy, and safe. And as I always say, spread love. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.